This is the Lion of Legend, and tonight we are going to be getting through Lift Your Spirits, which is a horror game about a procrastinating college student. I'm not sure what else to say about that, so let's just get into it. Alone on a Friday night, and I'm spending it here. My fingers were sluggish as they typed out the last bit of conclusion needed to finish off my paper. I didn't even bother spell checking the rest, my hand dragging the cursor across to close the document. Alright, time to submit it. I typed out my regards to Mr. Holtman. Kindly find the attached file of assignment, your student, Lion. Sure, that's a college student name. Stifling a yawn, I turned on my phone to check the time. 2.53am. The universal experience of losing sleep and gaining eye bags as a college student came to grace me in its hold once again, it seems. At least it's the weekend. Turning off the computer, it suddenly hit me how quiet it was without my fingers tapping away at the keyboard. Everyone else had left. The campus was open 24-7, but who else was dumb enough to push their luck in submitting their assignment this late? I'm sure I was that dumb at one point in time. I considered myself lucky Mr. Holtman gave me the extended deadline, otherwise I'd be screwed. Well, I never needed an extended deadline though. Still, there were also the rumors. Disembodied voices echoing through empty rooms. Heavy footsteps shuffling down the halls. Those who were lucky claimed to see a black silhouette skulking around the vending machine at the end of the corridor, staring at them. I wasn't the superstitious type, but I had to admit, the eerie silence of being the only person here gave me the creeps. I was recalling all the gossip spread around the student body when a sound made me perk up. I glanced behind me over the monitors to see if someone had come in. Nobody. I ignored the goosebumps rising on my arms as I gathered up my items into my bag. Superstitious or no, I've done what I came here for. Time to go. I shampled to the elevators and tapped the button. It rumbled to life, slowly making its way up to my floor. Just a couple more minutes and I'm out of here, I assured myself. I don't know why, but I found myself constantly checking behind me as if expecting someone there. Yet it always, it's always empty every time I look. And I tapped the button some more. The hairs at the back of my neck stood, as if I was being watched. Oh, this is cute. I clenched my fists, ignoring how sweaty they felt in my pockets. Is there someone behind me? Ding. I jumped. The door slid open as I released the breath I didn't realize I was holding. I didn't even consider looking back as I stepped inside, refusing to turn around until the doors closed. The chipper background music they played calmed me down somewhat. I'm almost in disbelief they were still playing it at this hour. Almost. I pressed the button for the ground floor, the elevator moving with a small jolt. With nothing to do but wait, I stared as the number slowly descended. The lull of the elevator was starting to make me sleepy. I thought of the things I could do once I got home, just to distract myself for all the rest of the time, the ride. A shower, for sure. Microwave dinner pro- oh, oh, okay, there's problems. I blinked up at the flickering lights. 
the elevator shuddered and came with an abrupt came to an abrupt halt. The music cut out. I tried the button for the ground floor, then the rest. Unresponsive. Pushing the intercom button gave nothing but static. H hello No. No 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 this this can't be happening. Taking a moment to compose myself, I called out. I... Is anyone out there? I'm stuck in here. Help. I started slamming the doors as panic took hold. There had to be someone out there. Help. Please, I'm in here. I didn't stop for a good minute, getting more and more desperate as tears welled up in my eyes. Why? Why now? Why me? I knocked my forehead against the door in a slump, ready to curl up and cry. This sucks. I was about to turn before I felt a chill run up my spine. The air felt very heavy. Is this claustrophobia setting in? I didn't think I had a fear of closed spaces. Unless... There was a raspy moan from behind me. I turned my head, this is going to be a jump scare, and screamed, this is going to be a jump scare. Across me was the glowing blotch of darkness and oozing mass that seemed to melt through the walls. No jump scare. I scrambled away, my back flat against the doors. A hand emerged from the writhing form, grasping at the edges. Foul-smelling black ichor dripped from its fingers. Another arm followed suit, clinging to the other side. I couldn't look away. I couldn't find my voice to scream. A face took shape. A pair of hollow eyes and a manic grin with several teeth. It seemed to smile directly at me. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, man. I blacked out. He kit he wake up. He hey. I heard a voice, panicked and flustered from above me. Oh, this is fine. A person was looming over me, visibly worried as I blinked back to consciousness. You're alive. I couldn't really check for a pulse, so... Anyway, are you alright? I think so. Phew, I'm glad. Didn't mean to scare you back there. I realized I was still in the elevator, but now with a stranger twiddling their thumbs in front of me. They were taller than me, looming a few good inches past my head. Their limbs looked even more awkward in the baggy sweater they had. I wasn't sure if they forgot to wash away their makeup, or if they just haven't slept for three days straight. Possibly both. I realized they were staring at me as well. Their eyes focused on me a little too long, as if they'd forgotten how to blink. Uh, so... I suddenly remembered the last thing I saw. That creepy shadow from the walls. But before you were here, there was... There was something crawling out of the walls. I I know it sounds insane, but I swear. It looks straight out of a horror movie. The stranger looked nervous. Crap, they think I'm nuts. Don't look at me like that. No, I, I believe you, for sure. You saw it too? Well, sort of. Um, sorry. I was really trying to be sneaky. That must have been uncomfortable to watch, huh? Come again? What are you saying? W well, I heard you yelling for help and I couldn't just leave you alone, so I did the next best thing I could. Are you saying that was you? Uh, yes, 
in a way. There's really no easy way for me to say this. I'm not alive, and not the way you are. Did they mean... You mean like a ghost? The stranger lit up appreciatively. Basically, you must have heard the rumors, right? Well, it's me, in the flesh. Well, sans the flesh. Uh... So if I stick my hand through them for evidence, because they look kind of dead, but, like... Okay. My hand shut out before I could think twice. What? The tips of my fingers instantly felt airy and ice cold, like touching something solid yet nut. The stranger yelped and backed away. Hey, do you just going around sticking your fingers in the people you just met? Oh boy. S sorry, I thought you were messing with me. The stranger was having none of it. Ugh, why do I even bother? If you sit tight and don't do anything stupid, they'll come find you in the morning. They shifted into a familiar black, shapeless entity, melting into a puddle and disappearing through the floor. Exactly the same way they had entered. I found myself alone for the next seven hours. The workers found me half, found me half dozing in the corner the next morning. I stayed late most nights on campus to see if the stranger would show up, but it seems they're ignoring me on purpose. I never saw them again. Bad end one, rude awakening. Oof. Okay. Alright, so this time let's just believe them. I feel like this isn't the worst situation to be meeting a ghost for the first time. The stranger gave a sigh of relief. Thank you for trusting me. Um, I'd ask you for your name, but, but I already know that it's Lion. How did you... I've been... watching you for a while. Uh, excuse me? Tonight. I've been watching you for a while tonight. It's not safe to be alone this late. I would know. Before I could ask further, they straightened. Uh, anyways... I stuck around to see you write your paper. I don't necessarily agree with your hypothesis, but interesting nonetheless. Thanks, I think. They gave a shy smile. No problem. This wasn't the way I expected my night to go, but I guess the sooner I accepted it, the better. I should probably ask for their name instead of calling them stranger. You know my name, but what about yours? Oh. They looked away, fingers prickling at their sleeve. I don't remember. I know who I was and what I did when I was alive, but not my name. Strange, isn't it? Have you ever thought of picking one yourself? Their eyes widened as if the thought never occurred to them. I never needed a name, but if I were to have one, I've always liked the way Alma sounds. It's perfect. Their smile widened. Thank you, Lion. Alma went back to twiddling their fingers. We stood in silence for a while, gauging on what to say next. I kept glancing back at their hands, wondering if they feel as solid as they looked. They knew I was staring but didn't seem to mind, waiting patiently in front of me. My thoughts were running wild from sleep deprivation, and shocked to actually form words past their introductions, to be honest. They started humming softly, as if to fill the silence. That's when it hit me. For a ghost, they could easily be a student just like me. I have to ask, how did you, um... Alma had a knowing look in their eyes. Oh man, it's honestly kind of embarrassing. Despite having no blood flowing through their veins, their cheeks seemed to darken. We, 
we don't have we don't have to get into it. But I really want to know. Please? I they hesitated before nodding. Promise you won't make fun of me? Promise. Okay. So I was staying late working on an assignment just like you. No one was around. Even back then, I was known as a loner most of the time. It didn't bother me. While I was working, I got thirsty. No big deal. So I headed over to the vending machine for a drink. They paused, hands shaking. They clasped at their wrists and twisted before continuing. Ju just the soda. Not too much to ask, right? I paid for the damn thing, but somehow my hand got stuck in the dispenser. So I pulled and pulled and, well, they struggled a bit before I waved for them to continue. It fell, and I felt my whole body being crushed under the weight. I couldn't even cry out for help. And the whole time my hand was still stuck on that thing. Not that I could even tell, I think my wrist was beyond saving at that point. They suck into themselves. I died trying to get some cheap soda. How pathetic is that? It's not. I'm sorry that happened to you. I put my hand over theirs. It passed right through, giving an ice-cold chill at my fingertips, but I almost seemed to appreciate it nonetheless. They looked up to me, their nervous hands finally coming to a stop. I've never told anyone about it before. I didn't think it would feel this freeing. Thank you. You, you know, I, I think you're a really great person. I want to help you get out of here. I tilted my head. How are you going to do that? I can try some things, that is, if you trust me. Well, uh, trust, I, don't, I guess I don't have a choice. They clapped their hands excitedly. Oh, oh boy. Okay, here we go. You might want to hold on to something. This just sounds kind of sus. Before I could ask any further, the elevator began to drop. Uh... My heart plunged into my throat as my weight shifted upwards. Alma? Hang on, let me focus. The buttons for each floor flashed beside me. I closed my eyes, shut, and decided to trust them. I felt like a roller coaster heading straight to the ground. The air whizzed around me. I gripped my teeth and clenched my hands, knuckles probably white if I bothered to look. And just like that, it stopped. I yelped as the elevator jolted. I landed on my ass with a smack. I blinked my eyes open to see Alma clapping excitedly. They looked over to see me on the floor and gestured towards the doors. They creaked open as if manually pulled apart by an unseen force. My jaw dropped as, they, as I realized they really did bring me to the ground floor. You really did it. I did, I did. Oh, I never got to do that before. I couldn't believe my eyes. I stood and threw my arms around Alma, only to completely pass through them. They yelped and backed away to the wall. Give a signal before you do that. I don't appreciate feeling hands inside of me. It's gross. Oh, sorry. I gathered myself and stepped through the doors. Alma following suit. Sure enough, the lobby was empty, the clock on the wall indicating it was close to 4 a.m. now. What? well I guess this is it. I turned to see them trying hard not to reach for their hands, fingers twitching to intertwine with one another. It all happened so fast. It sunk in now that I could leave and go home, right now if I wanted to. Alma. Thank you. I appreciate it. They nod understandingly. I stood there for a moment as they looked at me before avoiding their eyes. They were waiting for me to leave. 
I grasped at my phone inside my pocket, mustering the courage to ask what I was about to ask. Would you ever want to hang out again? They did a double take. Huh? Would you want to? Yes. But. Why would you want to? Why wouldn't I? I like you. Once again, their cheeks darkened despite being them. I... I like you, too. Am I playing a horror game or a sim day game? Yeah, I, I'd love to hang out again. Great. Preferably when I'm, you know, not stuck and helpless in an elevator. My heart skipped a beat as they laughed lightly. Preferably, of course. I'll see you next week. Yes, don't worry about a time or place. I can always find you, wherever you are in the building. Kind of unsettling, but okay. Stay safe, lion. I waved and headed towards the entrance, pulling my phone out to call for a driver from one of my apps. When I turned to look back, Alma was already gone. Good end two. Friends for life. Or more. Or more. Okay. I don't recall how many endings there are in this game. Um, but let's see. Let's see what happens here. If we back down. Uh, I guess I don't have to tell you then. That's alright. I heaved a sigh and moved to sit down, leaning against the doors. Alma looked on curiously. What are you doing? I shrugged and took out my phone to look for, the t for a time-wasting app. In no time, I had one of my mindless games open. Might as well settle in and spend the next few hours trying to beat my high score. Not much I can do right now. Got some battery to last a couple of hours. I pat down a spot next to me. You wanna watch? I almost stood for a moment, as if unsure. Come on, plenty of room for both. Just watch your legs, Lanky. They settled in beside me, sitting crisscross applesauce and leaned over to look at my phone. My shoulder immediately chilled at their close proximity, but I didn't bother bringing it up. We chatted amicably as my fingers tapped away at my screen, Alma getting more invested the higher my numbers got. But otherwise, it was peaceful company. A few hours passed. I must have dozed off at some point, as the next thing I knew, there was some whirling behind me that woke me up with a jolt. Voices began to call out, and I turned to see some workers prying the door open for me. It took no time for me to step outside when their work was done. The sunlight shining over me made it feel like everything that happened last night was a dream. I turned on my phone to look at the time. Instead, I saw an unset message typed it on the screen. Be safe. Careful about staying late next time. I blinked and looked around. A cold chill went on my arm, and I almost turned to expect Alma but saw nothing. Next time? I put my phone away and rubbed my bleary eyes, mentally making a note to stay back at the campus more frequently from now on. Good end one. Till next time. Alright, let's see if we can find the true last ending here. Alright, so this may be the one we're looking for. After they explained how they died, I'm going to, uh, I suppose, insult Alma. Almost eyes shrunk into thin slits. You. Why are you so mean to me? Oh yeah, here, here comes the spoops. The lights dimmed, a fuzzy static rising in the air. A heavy weight settled into my chest as almost stared me down. Their height only made me shrink further. I've done nothing but be nice to you. All I wanted to do was help, and yet... Oh, oh yeah, this is a problem. 
everything went dark. I stepped back as rasping noises came from in front of me. Sounds of scuffling and bones snapping. My back hit the wall. It was cold. Colder than anything I've ever felt. It hurt to breathe as I waited in the dark for something to happen. Huh. Hello? Oh boy. Oh, that's... Huh. Huh. Uh, the emergency lights turned on. Uh, I don't think Alma's very... Very happy. Um, yeah, Alma no longer looked human. Yeah, it looks very not human to me. Multiple eyes writhed across their form. Tiny slits with red pupils. Judging. Judging. Judging me. Mouths cackled and taunted whispering you deserve this you deserve this you deserve this w wait my feet buckled as the elevator began to drop free falling as gravity's pull took over the buttons began to light up one by one as we fell by each floor faster and faster as it gained speed the scraping of metal was loud in my ears. I dropped to my knees, begging for it to stop. And stop it did. Splat. Bad end too. You deserved it. Okay. Um, I think. I'm pretty sure that was all the endings. I enjoyed this. This was nice. It was a nice little quick... Visual novel, um, kind of like a mix between a horror, well, it's definitely a horror game, and <laughs> almost felt like I was playing a sim dating game with some of the endings there. I think Almond's pretty, pretty cute character, pretty cool person. I, I'm sure if I were in that scenario, I would not have been mean and gotten that awful ending at the end there. Anyways, um, I will gladly put information on this game or you can play it in the description feel free to make any commentary make suggestions that I could potentially look into in the near future anyways it's pretty late here so y'all have a good night